Has anyone heard of a company called Amped Rides? I'm trying to get in contact with them after an experience I had with one of the carnival rides they manufactured. I went back today and the whole unit was missing. I had written down their number from information on the side of the ride, but it's out of service. Last night I had taken my wife and daughter to the local fair. It's early in the season and lightly rained throughout the night, which kept the crowd down. The rain wasn't enough to close any of the rides, so we had a fantastic time. My daughter was able to go on all her favorite rides multiple times in a row. My wife isn't as big on the rides, but was happy to eat fair food and play games, so we split up often to do our own things. At the end of the night, we were tired, but completely satisfied. We were on our way out, but still looking around for anything cheap to spend our remaining tickets on. This fair was like any other I had been to. You can't just buy your way onto a ride, you have to buy tickets. And then the rides usually cost a number of tickets like 18 or 27, depending on their size and popularity. Thus, you're always left with a few tickets at the end as incentive to buy another roll or come back another day. I had no tickets left while Allison had just five. My wife had 20 and quickly found a horseshoe throwing game that she resolved to spend it all on. So my daughter and I searched high and low for anything that just cost five tickets. My hopes weren't high. The only things I had seen at that price were baby rides. Allison had just turned 10 years old, and reaching double digits had done amazing things for her maturity. I knew better than to even suggest she go on one of those rides. But then Allison screamed with delight as she ran past me and to the edge of the fair. There was a long hall with a spinning hamster wheel, maze of glass walls, and dangling colorful punching bags. Bright lights lit up the whole thing, and there was a nearby sign advertising the price of a mere five tickets. I caught up to Allison just as she was giving her last ticket to the fair employee. He was an older man who looked more tired than I felt, but he smiled when he saw me and asked, Want to brave the maze? My daughter tugged on my hand and said, Yeah, come on, Daddy. I resisted her pull and explained to both of them, Sorry, I don't have any tickets left. The old man winked and said, No problem, Daddy. You can go on. Keep an eye on the girl. Safety first. I thanked him and let Allison pull me towards the start of the maze. At first I thought we weren't going to get our money's worth. We breezed through the first section of glass walls and, and I let Allison run on the hamster wheel for a while. Then we moved on and I realized we were being funneled to the back wall, which Allison pushed open to reveal a room lit only by black lights. She ran ahead and immediately into a glass wall. I lightly chided, Be careful, the maze probably continues all throughout this back part. But she was already running ahead, giggling the whole time. I tried to keep up, but I was quickly finding myself confused by the invisible walls in this low light. Allison disappeared from view, but I could still hear her close. She must have been getting lucky to find a right path forward, because I had to double back several times. I started to panic a little, even though my little girl was clearly more capable at this than I was. My hands remained constantly outstretched in anticipation of each new wall. Then I heard Allison from behind me. I whipped around, but I didn't see her. She was calling out for me. Daddy, where are you? This broke my heart a little, so I ran forward and immediately into another glass wall. It was surprisingly sturdy and unyielding. I bounced off and went around yelling, Allison, stay put. I'll be right there. I was shocked when she popped up to my right and said, No need to shout, Dad. I'm right here. I turned to give her a hug, but another glass wall separated us. She put her hand on it, and I covered it with my own on my side. Her hand seemed so tiny next to mine. She asked, Hey, how do you get ahead of me? We'll have to be careful. This maze is tricky. I think the room was designed to bounce sound around too. No really, you were just behind me. 
How are you here so fast? I tried following the glass around to find a corner. I could turn, but it stayed a straight wall, for as far as I could reach, while keeping the conversation going. I was behind you, trying to keep up. You must have doubled back without noticing. No, I mean, just now, Dad. I don't think we're alone in here. There was another man behind me. I just assumed it was you. Oh, you don't need to get too worried. This is a public event, after all. He's just another patron of the fair, that's all. Despite my outwardly calm demeanor, I was freaking out on the inside. If I hadn't already confirmed how tough these walls were, I might have tried breaking through right then and there. Instead, I asked her to stay put while I tried to work my way around to her and keep her in view. After a few minutes of failing, I thought it was best if she kept moving. I gave her final instructions to scream if any strangers approached her, and then we both hugged the glass in front of us. When she finally ran off, there was a trick of the light and I thought I saw her reflection turn and run in the opposite direction. I didn't waste any time trying to understand this place. Clearly it was designed to confuse. I raced around trying to find the way back. The plan was for me to exit any way I could and asked the attendant to turn on the lights, keep an eye out for my daughter, and I could enter through the exit, and hopefully encounter her quickly. But I couldn't find a way out. The maze twisted and turned and kept taking me further and further from where I thought I needed to go. The walls went all the way up to the ceiling. I could reach up and touch it easily, but this still seemed too over-engineered for a cheap park. I was almost crying with frustration when I started to catch glimpses of her everywhere. I abandoned all strategy as I hurried in just about every direction that I last saw her. I just wanted to keep my daughter safe. Her voice kept popping up. That's the only way I can describe it. Sometimes she sounded like she was right behind me. Sometimes she sounded worlds away. And then I turned and there she was. 20 feet ahead and facing away from me. She screamed and I instinctively ran forward to protect her, right into another wall. I knew immediately that I had broken my nose. My eyes watered and my throat choked a bit on the blood that was flowing in the wrong direction. I leaned my head forward as I felt with my hands around the wall in front of me. Luckily this was the last obstacle between my little girl and I. My yelp of pain had alerted her, and she ran over and gave me a big hug. Of course, the first thing I asked her was, Are you okay? Why did you scream? Are you hurt? She wiped away tears from her eyes, but was grinning wide, glad to be reunited. She answered, I'm fine. I'm fine, Daddy. I thought I heard you, so I stopped to listen close, and then you popped up in front of me. Confused, I walked forward while looking at the glass wall she had previously been standing in front of. Then my face popped up, looking very frightening now, with my nose already turning a darker color and blood trails from both nostrils. I was looking at my reflection in the glass. I wondered how often I had really caught glimpses of Allison during my wild chase. I was probably just seeing parts of my own face and body when the angle was just right. Now that we were together, I wasn't taking any chances. I held her hand tightly while putting my right hand on the wall. We walked around and around, my hand never lifting from the wall. Eventually, we made it out of the exit. My wife was waiting there, with a huge stuffed unicorn in her arms and a worried expression on her face. When she saw my face, she dropped the unicorn and ran over to see if I was okay. I gave her the condensed version. We had gotten a little lost in the surprisingly huge maze, but no real harm was done. All in all, we had spent 40 minutes in that horrible thing. I was feeling pretty silly, but I still wanted to complain to someone. The old man at the ticket booth was nowhere to be seen, and the entrance was already locked up. So in the end, we just left. As we drove out of the parking lot, 
I started to worry if the misadventure was in any way traumatizing to Allison. She looked absolutely normal in the car's rearview mirror. We ended up driving near that maze on our way out, so I scribbled out the name and number of the company I saw on the ride. When I was done, I looked in the mirror again. I was even more worried now as I struggled to understand a few confusing things. First, I was surprised to see the whole building was only 30 feet deep. It felt much larger when we were running around inside. Also, the name on the side was Maze of Mirrors, when it had clearly just been a maze of glass walls. And then my wife asked, Since when are you right-handed? <laughs>